Hi, everyone. I'm here with Nicole, the gut girl. As always, thanks for being here, Nicole. Thanks for having me. All right. So we'll talk about how people can get a hold of you and find out more about what you do towards the end. If you guys like uh, videos on nutrition and what's going on in gym culture, uh, fitness, all that stuff, please like and subscribe to the channel. And so we're going to talk about coffee. Now, coffee is one of those things, and I can't wait to hear what you say about this, because again, we always say everyone's different. Everyone is different. Now, coffee is a huge benefit. I've heard so much about the benefits of coffee. This, it's good. It's, the, it's so good for this. It's so good for that. You should drink it, you know, probably within reason, sure. but that's not going to be the case for everyone, right? Right. Absolutely. Who so, shouldn't drink it? So who shouldn't drink this? And you got to remember, you're totally right. I, I absolutely love coffee. I'm a coffee snob. I love it. And it would be hard pressed for me not to have it. <laughs> so, but people with any kind of IBS, irritable bowel, irritable bowel syndrome um, situation should not be drinking coffee. You should be getting down to the bottom of what's causing IBS. And then you should be able to go back to coffee. Um, people with glaucoma should not because it can cause intraocular pressure on the nerves and that's not going to help your situation. Of course, pregnant or breastfeeding women should not have it. But I always put take people who have serious anxiety and depression off of coffee because it will act differently in the system or based on the nervous system. So I don't, I take them off for a time period while we figure out what is going on with the dopamine and serotonin. Um, definitely not people with epilepsy should not have this. Again, it's a nervous, situ nervous system situation and people with HPA access issues. So people with any kind of nervous system problem should not be doing this. But let me go to the next phase of this. So if you're going to drink coffee and you're a coffee snob like I am, and I love it, you should definitely make sure you're getting the right type of coffee. You should be checking for molds. You should be getting a coffee that checks for carcinogens. Um, if it causes you any nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, you should not have that because you have gotten a terrible coffee. Um, it, it is often stored in a high moisture content, which will cause more mold. It's particularly the two molds that are huge in coffee is asper, aspergillus and penicillium. Um, those are the two molds. And I have been, the reason why this came up is I have been doing tons of mold testing on people recently and they are just through the roof in these two types of molds because they're drinking, you know, just the off the shelf coffee. And they're also doing the number one thing I say not to do. They're putting it through a Keurig, which you're going through plastic into a moldy cup. So now you've got plastics and mold in your cup of coffee. Yeah. You got to really, you know, you said irritable bowel. You're talking about diarrhea. If you, mm -hmm. Okay. Someone drinks coffee and you get diarrhea. Okay. Check that yeah. issue. Um, so you got to really special order your coffee. You know, Absolutely. that's what I do. Exactly you know, right. it, it has to be the best of the best. Um, and, and, and then you can probably get some health benefits out of it, but it's got to be the best of the best organic. And it's going to cost what, two or three times more oh, sure. than a regular bag of coffee, right? Sure. But just think of that two or three times right now in the, right now in the, where you're getting your coffee from versus the health problems. Sometimes when I see people with IBS problems, it's a good eight months to where we're getting the body cleaned up because there is so yeah. much there's mold there's h pylori there could be parasites there's all sorts of things going on in the body because the acidity of the body has changed in the stomach your um uh, now when you're entering these molds into the system now you have candida because it's a moisture issue it's one thing right after the other so now we've got an eight-month cleanup 
And that's a lot of cost versus some good coffee. So how do you buy coffee? I mean, just can, do you have a process where you, where you're checking, okay, checking off all the boxes to make sure it's okay to buy a certain coffee? How do you do it? So there's a couple coffees out there that will triple check for mold before it goes out. And it's also in how you store that. You should not be storing in a damp place where it can be, where it can get mold at your house. You want it in a dry place and you don't want it to sit for weeks on end. If you're not, if you're not going to use your coffee, get rid of it because it will get moldy, especially beans. If you're just letting beans sit, they're going to grow mold. So what, what should people look for if they're going to go special order coffee? What should they look for as far as what the, the company is promoting? Organic, mold testing, and free of carcinogens. Okay. So if that's on the package, if they're promoting that, then try it. Absolutely. Okay. So Nicole, if people want to get a hold of you now, you all know that if you mentioned you saw one of these um, videos, uh, Nicole will give you a hundred dollars off on her program. She does uh, hormones. She reads your blood work um, and will help you with your diet. And a lot of people go to uh, Nicole for, because they can't figure out what's wrong and she helps She'll help you do that. So how do they get a hold of you, Nicole? You can reach me at the gut girl one at gmail.com and all my social media platforms are the gut girl NV. Okay. Nicole, thanks so much for being with us. We'll see you next time. Thank you for having me.